We need to build a model that supports a vast, slow-selling inventory of books, just books, deliberately assembled to provide even the most world-weary reader with a browse that surprises and delights. Our model must find ways to achieve the metrics that indicate a commitment to books, serious books, offered for sale with a patience worthy of cultural artifacts. Hey everybody, thank you as always for watching Leaf by Leaf. Today I have the great pleasure of talking about In Praise of Good Bookstores by Jeff Deutsch. Deutsch is of course the director of the seminary co-op bookstores out of Chicago. And when he came along as the director in 2019, he incorporated the bookstore, the first not-for-profit bookstore whose mission is book selling. And by that, he means selling only books. Because as you'll also find out in here, the only way bookstores are really making it today is by selling what he refers to as tchotchkes. The seminary co-op established the model of the not-for-profit bookstore whose mission is book selling. Rather than rely on the retail model, buying cheap and selling dear, our new model looks to financing from the gift economy to provide an articulation of the sort of work we are attempting. Our society struggling to be born might build good bookstores in its communities if it understood the great value of a bookstore's gifts. I wasn't planning on making a video of my time spent reading this book because, to be honest, I didn't really know much about it and just suspected it was going to be another one of my beloved books about books. And I've gone on about some of those in my 25 books about reading or something like that, books about reading video. Some of my favorites appear in here because in part what this book is, is a book about books, but it's a lot more than just that. It has everything I love that my little brown book of anecdotes and my Oxford literary terms with examples and my Oxford dictionary of quotations and my Fowler's dictionary of modern English uses, my book about books by Holbrook, which was formerly under the more pleasing title of Anatomy of Bibliomania. But it also gave me insight into the literary business and specifically into the bookseller's trade. So it was also informative, like this incredible book, A Gentle Madness by Nicholas A. Bassbanes. Because of Deutsch's sumptuous selection of bookish anecdotes and quips, and other aphoristic pleasures, I went and bought the Book Lovers Anthology immediately because I saw that a lot of the quotes came from this gorgeous compendium. I also went and got The Browser's Ecstasy, A Meditation on Reading by Jeffrey O'Brien. This, wow, this is just something like ecstatic poetry straight out of a bookworm's enthralled heart. On top of that, Deutsch also showed me what exactly Amazon is doing to the world of book selling and the value of books in our culture in a way that I hadn't seen before. Yes, I've heard and gleaned much ill about Amazon's practices in book selling, and I've heard book selling Puritans gripe about the fact that Amazon started as a bookstore and now they're anything but. Yet, that's not quite true. I mean, yeah, they sell a lot of other stuff, but I am hard-pressed to think of anyone who doesn't buy books on Amazon. But Deutsch takes the time early in the book and then reconnects back to it throughout the course of the text to quote Bezos from an early speech he gave about the business model of Amazon. And he is very forthright and open about the fact that books are actually the loss leader for Amazon. However, the reason that they started with books and continue to sell so many books is because books by far have the greatest quantity in their category, meaning there are so many books out there and so many books that continue to get published each year that the catalog is so vast on your online retail store that you're sure to capture just about any and everyone, no matter what they're looking for. As long as you've got it, 
you can hook them. And thus, it is in their best interest to sell their biggest category and their most attractive category at a loss so that they can hook people and then shove all kinds of advertisements and algorithm sanctioned ideas as to what else you should buy from Amazon from that hook. That economic model makes sense. I mean, who wouldn't do that? Well, Deutsch tells us who wouldn't do that. Serious booksellers and people who actually value literature, value books and value physical bookstores in our culture, value books as the pieces of our culture. If there's still to be any kind of rich, robust, ongoing cultural conversation that is like reading a book, slow and meditative and ruminative instead of just knee jerk and ephemera, then we need to put value back on books and booksellers and authors. So sure, from the average person's perspective, I mean, who wouldn't go and pay $17 for a new hardcover release versus the $35 in your local bookstore? It just makes sense from our point of view. We're trained to go for the deal. But not only are you jilting the author, ultimately, when it comes to royalties and the way that Amazon handles its work with publishers and authors and so on, but it also conditions this mindset and turns us into just primitive consumers. Now we're conditioned to think, I'm not gonna pay any more than $20 for that new hardcover. Another thing that's shifting towards the view of putting more value on books is that it will cause you to be a more selective reader. Yes, it does mean you will probably buy less books, but that's actually a good thing when it comes to reading. Because just as Deutsch does in this book, if you sit and calculate based on how many books you've read on average up to now and turn and look towards your future, you know, predicting what age you're going to perish or stop being able to read, you'll quickly see that we can't read that much. We can only read a drop of what's out there. So learning to be a more selective reader is a wonderful practice to start as soon as possible. One great way to condition yourself on that trend is to financially limit yourself. I dare also say that putting more financial investment into something will raise the stakes of appreciation. Meaning, again, it'll have more value in your eyes because you had to put more up for it. The worth of that paperback is just $10. The worth of that oversized art book is maybe $30. Or man, I can get this for $35 plus tax at my local bookstore, or I can buy two hardcovers or three paperbacks for the same price from Amazon, and they'll arrive right at my doorstep tomorrow. But what we're effectively doing, even though, even though I myself shied away from the truth of this, is devaluing books. We really are. We're saying, yes, I'll pay $100 to go to the movie theater, and that's worth it. But no, no, I'm not going to pay $30 for a brand new hardcover. And so what Deutsch does in this book is he really chips away at this conditioning we're living in. And he causes us, at least he calls me, to seriously think about whether or not I'm devaluing the things that I love so much. Because with a bookstore, you're not just buying the book. And this is where the argument takes on its glorious complexity and fullness. We have to look at the bookstore as this bastion for our interior lives. And we have to value that space and the booksellers as the experts with whom we cultivate a relationship. That's part of what we're paying for when we pay a little more for a book. After all, as he says, the bookstore is a haven for the heterodox. And I love that little line that comes early on in the book because I had the great, great fortune of reading this on my flight to San Francisco. 
And there I made my pilgrimage to City Lights Bookstore, which comes up again and again in Deutsch's book. There I was able to purchase this nice hardcover 40th anniversary edition of Howl and this hardcover 60th anniversary edition of an anthology of City Lights poetry, edited, of course, by Lawrence Ferlinghetti. I also got this sweet blank journal with no lines on the pages, which is atypical for me, but it just has this cool street shot of the outside of City Lights. I have no clue what I'm going to do with this. Maybe I'll turn it into yet another uh, floor mat or a commonplace book from a true bookworm, such as what uh, <laughs> Deutsch has done here partly. You know, I'm so fortunate to have read this book on my way there because I found myself for the first time in a very long time thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying the experience of being in a bookstore and talking with expert booksellers. I was made much more sensitive to the way in which the books are arranged on the shelves, the way in which they're categorized, the way in which they place the placards for the staff picks and why they picked it, the way they arranged their various front tables. It was also really cool to see this exact book right there at every register. And while I was there, I grew very nostalgic and I realized how much time I've been spending purchasing books through Amazon versus getting out and going to bookstores. Now, some of this is COVID related, but it's been way longer than just the last couple of years or few years. And it occurred to me that, you know, growing up, we didn't have a lot of money in our household. So I went on weekly trips to the public library. And that's how I did the bulk of my reading. And then for my birthday and Christmas, I would get new books. When I moved to Greensboro in 2003, there was an independent bookstore that was just one of the most glorious havens I have ever visited. I used to go there often without any intention of buying anything and just browsing to see what might turn up. This really serendipitous indulgence. And I formed a relationship with the owner and we talked constantly about books, about our reading habits, about books we loved, our secret books, our guilty pleasures. Over time, it got to the point where I would walk in and he would have just gotten back from one of his book buying trips up and down the East Coast. And he had set aside a book or two that he found perfect just for me. But then one day he broke the awful news that he was shutting down all operation. It just wasn't sustainable economically. And then someone swooped in and bought the store and they were going to keep it open and keep the book buying and curation or assemblage and filtration, as Jeff Deutsch calls it in his book. They were going to have poetry reading nights and all this different stuff. And lo and behold, they first closed the doors on the brick and mortar and switched to online only. But that still wasn't financially sustainable and they fell prey to Amazon and now that bookstore has ceased to exist. That love of those luminous book browsing days in a true brick and mortar with an expert bookseller were just really rekindled because of this book and going to City Lights. And so I felt it so important to make a video championing this book because of the conversation and the thinking that it is sure to spark, no matter which side of the fence you're on. Discernment is the primary quality of the good bookseller. Filtration, selection, assemblage, and enthusiasm, their work. This is something that algorithms and machine learning, they're getting better and better, but they will never surface those diamonds in the rough that just come out of nowhere and that you don't even realize you're gonna love. As Deutsch captures it so perfectly, he says, while an algorithm might suggest a book that we are likely to enjoy based upon who we've been or what an advertiser might want us to think we want, nothing can replace the work of browsing to help us discover who we are or who we might become. And when I first read that on the plane, I sat back against the headrest with my eyes closed for a while and just chewed on that. And part of the, the joy of browsing in a bookstore is referred to as chewing intellectual cud and being good for the digestion, as Deutsch says in here amusingly. But I thought more and more about that. And the way that AI works and the way that machine learning works is that you just constantly feed it data about what has been 
and it starts to use what are called predictive analytics to project what may be. And so in the area of sales that I work in as, lo and behold, a data analyst and data engineer <laughs> at my day job, we take 10 plus years worth of sales data and we load it in and fine tune our algorithms such that we can then pinpoint customers most likely to buy one of our products and win. Mike Deutsch says, this is all based on past behavior. What if there's some new way of being in the world or thinking of the world that I've never encountered or thought to encounter? The algorithm is just not going to provide that. Ah, here it is. What an unparalleled activity it is to browse a bookstore in a state of curiosity and receptivity, chewing one's intellectual cud. The space of a bookstore must be conducive to unhurried rumination, if only to promote good digestion. And he gives us that last line, not just to close off the metaphor and extend it and make it funny and make it pop, but also because it may be that all we do in a bookstore over a long course of time is chew intellectual cud. In other words, we may often walk out without buying anything. And so this is one of the primary reasons why we need a new business model for good bookstores and for good booksellers to thrive. We need a model that supports cultural activity and development and sharpening over a long course of time, not just simply selling as many products as quickly as possible for the cheapest price. Books are these objects that often spend a very long time sitting there waiting to be read. The poet and critic Jeffrey O'Brien in his well-titled book, The Browser's Ecstasy, longed to discover the book he could not imagine. The unread book, he's quoting O'Brien, is the life yet to be lived, he reasons. The promise that there will be new ideas, images never glimpsed, the paradise of futurity is the thousand page book full of episodes still to come. He quotes one of Ortega E. Gasset's students who says that every private library is a reading plan. I love that. A reading plan and a rereading plan. A plan that with all these books, I can shape into different reading plans over and over throughout the course of my life. Susan Sontag called her library an archive of longings. Love that. Our community can work together. Because of course, if the bookseller, if the bookstore is going to operate as a not-for-profit and only sell books, they're just going to make it. Now, how are they going to stay afloat? Well, we have to realize that we're all in this together. And so we have to agree as hungry readers and thinkers, we have to agree that books are valuable enough that we'll turn to spending a little more on the books to support the book selling industry. That way, the aspiration of the bookseller can continue to be to provide the conditions by the power of the good bookstore to slow the reader down that they might behold a more capacious vision of the possible. Some of the actions that I've decided to take are, first of all, to discontinue my Amazon Associates account, and I'm going to update all of my videos and take the Amazon book buying links out of them, and I'm going to replace them with uh, indie bookstore links or something like that, such that you'll be helping out a brick and mortar bookstore if you buy a book through a link on my video. The other thing I'm doing is I am working on trying to partner with a local bookstore here in my hometown. I have an idea for a series of videos that we can do that I'm very excited about and I've been pitching to various writers and critics with whom I'm in touch and this could be a very, very enriching addition to the world of literature. I wanna leave with this. By looking not to the next new thing, but to the last enduring thing, we are more likely to grasp our unique and not so unique challenges, to learn the origin of a particular narrative, perhaps to subvert that narrative, to attempt to find meaning after tragedy or to comprehend the capacity, complexity, and diversity of human nature, experience, and knowledge. I highly recommend that you go out and get this book preferably from your local bookseller and experience over two decades worth of reading and thinking about the whole business of book selling and the life of a serious reader. Thank you, Jeff Deutsch, 
for giving us this.